Hi everyone, my name is Danny Kirsch. I'm a PhD candidate at Oklahoma State University, and today I'll be talking about how the timing of predation risk affects reproductive success across the lifetimes of snails. So first things first, uh, what do we know about predation risk timing and the effects that it has on organisms at different points in life? Um, so, and I should mention these are not snail specific examples, these are a little more broadly spread across taxa. So first example I've got here is looking at embryonic and larval exposure in damselflies. So when these animals were exposed to predator cues in those early stages in life, they, the authors found negative impacts on survival, growth rate, and development time. If we move a little later in lifetime to more juvenile stages, um, another study found that predator cue exposure in juvenile spider mites lengthened development time and decreased total fecundity. And if we look at the graphs on this right side of the screen, the upper graph shows that reduction in fecundity with the black bar representing females who received predator cues as juveniles and the white bar control females. And we also see that lengthening of development time in the lower graph. So again, black bars are predator cue exposed spider mites, and there was a lengthening in development time for both male and female spider mites. And I couldn't find a really good illustrative example of predator cue exposure specifically um, over short periods in uh, adults, but I did find a study that looked at handling stress in adult cuttlefish females and they found that this reduced egg production and hatching rate. So another element of this study is parental aging. And so again, generalizing kind of what we know about the effects of parental aging on offspring, we have evidence that this reduces offspring survival and fitness, and uh, some studies have shown uh, slower offspring development, so longer development periods, and reduced offspring growth rate. And this graph I've got over here on the right is from a zebrafish study comparing young parents on the right side with old parents on the left. And they were looking at the proportion of escaped embryos versus diapausing embryos. And so we see a very substantial increase in the number of diapausing embryos in those older parents, which is a pretty negative impact of aging. So for my response variables, uh, today I'll only be focusing on two of them, age at first reproduction and hatching rate. And so depending on the species that you're looking at, and even sometimes depending on the predator uh, that is the source of predation risk for a particular species, we see differences in age at first reproduction and how organisms respond. So some taxa will delay reproduction when exposed to predator cues, while other taxa will reproduce sooner. And for hatching rate, so at least with the snails that I work with, we define hatching rate as the number of hatchlings that successfully emerge from their eggs out of the total number of eggs in an egg mass. And so the study by Alden Hauser in 2015 looked at, among other things, hatching rate in response to age and predator exposure. And so the big thing to take away from this graph is the lower panel. And so we see regardless of treatment, whether it's the control treatment or the predator exposed treatment, there's a significant reduction in hatching rate in older parents. So I'll be using Pfizer Acuta for this study, and that's for a couple of reasons. So uh, for one thing, they've been very extensively studied for all sorts of responses to predation risk, which was very useful when designing this study and coming up with my various predictions and such. And unfortunately, this is not something I'll be getting into today due to time constraints, but there is a portion of this study that was focused on trying to quantify and compare offspring development. And uh, FISA Acuta has been used pretty extensively in toxicology studies, so I got a lot of information from there regarding developmental stages and developmental timing, as you can see from these photos down here uh, from a study by Gao et al. So, um, one important thing to note is the predator cues that I used in this 
experiment were chemical predator cues. So the way that we produce these is by feeding a set mass of snails to a number of crayfish, sampling water from those bowls, and combining it with water that has crushed snails in it. So that combination of injured conspecific cue and predators eating conspecifics has been shown time and again to elicit a very strong anti-predator response in this species. So I had three different exposure groups and then my control group. The embryonic exposure group was given one dose of predator Q on the day their egg mass was ovoposited and then a second dose three days later. The juvenile exposure group received their first dose on their hatch date, so the day that they emerged from their egg, and three days later. And then for the adult exposure group, I wanted to time that just prior to the onset of egg laying or full sex sexual maturation. And so this occurred during the fourth week post hatch. So the first day of that week and three days later, that group received their doses of predator cue. And then uh, once all snails had reached that fifth week post hatch, they received a mating opportunity once per week for a 24 hour period and they were mated with three non-experimental control snails. So for my predictions, now that I've kind of laid out my different exposure groups, um, one caveat I do have to say is the effects of this embryonic exposure group are going to depend very heavily on whether or not the predator cue is actually introduced during a period that embryos can detect it and respond to it. This has been shown in some other snail species, but we didn't know for sure whether our particular species would be capable of responding to this or would respond to it at all. So I kind of have two separate predictions for the embryo exposure group. Um, essentially, if they are not detecting or are not responding to predator cues, I expect the embryonic exposure and control groups to be the same. Otherwise, I have my predictions laid out in this table below. So for age at first reproduction, we've seen from previous studies in our lab that generally early exposure to predator cues delays reproduction. And so I expected to see that delay in both the embryo and juvenile treatments due to that early exposure period. I did not expect to see any kind of delay from the adult group since that was so close to the onset of typical reproduction in the lab. And for hatching rate, um, in some longer term exposure studies we've done in our lab, we did see uh, substantial or substantial reductions in reproductive characteristics. And uh, that other study I showed you by Alden Hauser also found impacts of predator cue exposure on uh, different hatching and survival in offspring. And so, like I said before, we expect to see a decline in hatching rate with age. I also expected all three exposure treatments to have some kind of negative impact on hatching rate but I expected the juvenile exposure group to be the most extreme because those snails are being hit right after they emerge from the egg. And um, we've seen that that early exposure period has had substantial impacts in the past. And so uh, for my husbandry and data collection, I started with collecting some wild snails from a field site we have just off campus and I got 28 egg masses from those parents. Once I had those egg masses, each egg mass was split approximately into quarters and randomly assigned to one of the four treatment groups. And then uh, the actual treatment, the embryonic exposure period started. Um, then once hatchlings started emerging from egg masses, I selected two hatchlings from each egg mass section and started the juvenile exposure whether they got control cue or predator cue, and then again um, another round of cue doses for the adult exposure period. And then I tracked those snails until they were 11 weeks old, and at least for the purposes of this presentation, I recorded age at first reproduction, and I sampled two egg masses per snail per week to 
assess hatching rate. So I had about 1,700 total egg masses that I was assessing for that among my four treatment groups. So first things first, there was no impact of treatment on age at first reproduction. I did a likelihood ratio test comparing the null model with the treatment model, and they were not significantly different from one another. So we see generally the majority of snails across treatments are reproducing, and um, there's no real difference in kind of the rate at which they start reproducing. And you'll be seeing this color scheme. You've been seeing it already, but you'll be seeing it continuing throughout the presentation. Gray will represent control snails, blue will represent embryo exposure snails, black will represent juvenile snails, and red will represent adult exposure snails. So this is where it gets interesting. Um, when I was looking at hatching rate, we found that there was a treatment age interaction or a couple treatment age interactions that were influencing the hatching rate decline. So first things first, we did see that hatching rate decreases with parent age, which we expected to see. And you can see that reflected here in the graph with generally negative slopes for all of these measurements. And um, again, the color scheme is the same for this graph. The only difference is dashed lines represent averages over the different parent ages, and the solid lines represent predictions from the model. Where this gets interesting, we see there's kind of almost two groupings in this graph. There's the adult and the control snails here in red and gray, and then in blue and black we have our embryo and juvenile snails. So we found that there was actually a significant interactive effect between embryonic exposure and age and juvenile exposure and age. And what this suggested was that the age-related hatching decline was actually reduced in these treatment groups, or it was offset somehow by those treatments. Just the embryonic exposure and juvenile exposure treatments seem to somewhat prevent or reduce that age-related decline. And so before I dig into kind of why we think that happened, what we think might be playing into it, I did want to talk about uh, one important conclusion that we got out of this study. So we already knew that the early exposure to predator cues has pretty drastic effects on survival, reproduction, um, all sorts of those traits in these snails. But all of the prior studies that our lab has done on this have been both early exposure and prolonged exposure. And so we weren't actually able to determine whether it was the timing or the duration of that stressor that was the most important. And so based on my results from this study, it seems as though it is both the timing and duration of that stressor that caused it to be so impactful in our previous studies. Because in these short-term early exposures in my study, we did not see drastic effects on survival, uh, at least with the reproductive traits we've analyzed so far. We don't see drastic negative effects on reproduction. We're actually seeing potentially um, some weakening of age-related reproductive senescence, which is interesting. And so now I'm left with this sort of puzzling question of what sets predator cues apart from other stressors for snail embryos or even young juveniles. And so a couple things came to mind. Uh, one is that stressors that have typically been studied in uh, embryos, at least in this species, are typically more physical stressors like pollutants and alterations in salinity. And so with those kind of embryo exposures, you tend to see deformities, you see really high mortality because of the physical impacts that they're having on embryos as they're developing. Predator cues, at least based on my understanding, should not have those type of physical effects, but they're going to be more information driven. And so perhaps by being exposed to this information, for such a brief period early in life, it's almost equipping these snails to start making changes to, or prompting the changes in physiology and reproduction to prepare offspring for a predator 
heavy environment. And so one avenue that I'm going to be exploring is whether embryo and juvenile exposure snails are actually laying fewer or smaller egg masses, which might imply that the embryos in those egg masses are better quality or have greater investment in them. And I do have the data to look into that. Um, so stay tuned for that down the road. I'll be very curious to see what we find from that. So with that, I'd like to thank my committee for feedback on experimental design and everyone who helped me with washing dishes and cutting algae and changing water, um, as well as the Swan Howard McCarley Student Research Award for funding, and then the Sick Me Magnum Award for travel. And I would like to thank the Division of Invertebrate Zoology for inviting me to present in this competition. And so with that, um, I have my email here on the bottom of the screen if you want to talk snails or have any insights as to why we got these wacky effects that we got. And other than that, enjoy these lovely deformed snail embryos. And thank you.